All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about what quite possibly and more than likely is the best, the best bushcrafting and survival knife combo out there for 2024. Now, I've done individual videos on both of these knives talking about why they are probably the best in their respective categories. But today I thought I'd talk about, in case you just want to go for it, honestly, why you should buy both of these knives right here, because they are probably the best bushcrafting and survival knife combo that you will find out there. And as I've said in both of their individual videos, I think that these are both very good knives for people who are wanting to get out into the field and honestly use these knives quite frequently or quite a lot because they are going to be knives that, I mean, you can just throw them in a truck and forget about them, but these are going to be really solid knives for use as pretty regular um, wilderness tools for either survival or bushcrafting. And honestly, their competitive offerings below or and honestly, for what they offer in value, they basically blow their competitive offerings out of the water. I mean, take for instance, you could get both of these knives for the time that I bought them under $200. And I do know that they have gone back up in price. I was lucky to get both of them um, around Black Friday for Black Friday deals. So I got the SRK for $99 and I got the Master Hunter for, um, I want to say it was, yeah, $90. So like $89.99, $99.99. So pretty, pretty legendary prices, both well under $100. And for example, this one Winkler Blue Ridge Hunter right here, this one knife is $360. So even if both of these knives costed $150 each, they would still be cheaper than that one bushcrafting knife and even other competitive offerings, things such as the Survive Knives GSO 5.0 or 5.1. It's about a $280 knife. So these would still be cheaper um, or these as I bought them still well cheaper than that. And so once again, you know, under $200 total for both of these knives, at least for me as I was able to find them um, you know under $200 for both of them blows basically any competitive offering out of the water and so just on price alone they're pretty good but the fact that both of these utilize CPM 3V so both of these are CPM 3V models means that they are really incredible I mean the closest competitive offering to the Master Hunter alone for me that I have in my collection is the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter once again also in CPM 3V both are about you know five 30 seconds in uh, inch thick and you know obviously there are some differences the uh, master hunter is a little bit bigger obviously um, the handle is fully rubberized as opposed to the exposed full tang of the bush crafter but um, yeah it's just absolutely insane now, what makes this a really good combo isn't just the price or the competitive offerings that these absolutely destroy, but also these are really great knives. So first off, let's start off with the Master Hunter here. This is a full flat ground, once again, CPM 3V blade, and this thing is really going to do quite well with bushcrafting. You have a nice high bevel, as I've shown in other videos. This high bevel is super, super slicey. This thing absolutely laser beams its way through most um, most materials as a whole. And then once again, something that I'm really becoming more and more a fan of, not just on my cold steels here, but also in general with a lot of my survival and bushcrafting knives, something that I'm becoming more a fan of is fully rubberized handles. Now these are near full tang knives, both the SRK and the Master Hunter, but they are fully rubberized, which means there's not going to be any cold spots if it's, you know, if you're dealing with winter or Arctic environments. And it's also going to be a very grippy um, handle, whether it's wet, whether it's dry, whether you have gloves on, whether it's your bare hand, it's going to be a very temperature neutral and it's also going to be a very grippy handle. And so those are things that I really love about these knives. In addition to their spines are pretty darn sharp for striking ferro rods, which is something that's a very common practice. And yeah, these knives are overall absolute just wins when it comes to survival and bushcrafting. But this one, especially for bushcrafting, you're also dealing with about a four and a quarter inch blade. So once again, a little bit smaller than something like the SRK, but still completely capable of doing most tasks. I mean, feather sticking, notching, um, all of those kinds of good 
tasks that you're going to be wanting to do or finding yourself encountering are going to be very easily done. In addition to, as I've talked about more with the SRK than the Master Hunter, you also have a multi-mount sheath. Of course, it comes with, you know, a belt loop on the back with the little, you know, like latch on it, but you can easily remove this with, with a couple Phillips head screws and put on, um, if you want to carry this or run this scout style, you can do that. You can run it, you know, with this belt loop. You can also, you know, bring it up with tech locks, um, ulti clips, and just make whatever you want. In addition to, as I've done with previous SRKs and other knives similar with the Securex sheaths, is it's very easy to mount um, different like <clears throat> multi-tool sheaths on here so that you can run either multi-tools or you can run um, different types of um, equipment or other tools on there to complement your tool or your knife. So anyways, stepping over to the SRK. The SRK has a lot of the same pros. It is a very similar knife. Now mine is an FDE, but this is the same exact handle as the Master Hunter, which once again, I really like this handle. Unlike the Cold Steel SRKC, this is a full thickness, like full handle on both of them. So it's very hand filling, especially when you're running things like gloves or mittens, you're still gonna get a very confident grip with this and you're not gonna feel lost in the handle. Now, the big things about the SRK is once again, you're stepping up to a six inch blade. So I think this is gonna be more well-versed for survival because you are going to be able to baton through larger pieces of wood, you know, the span things that are just physically bigger. Once again, two very sharp uh, spine for striking ferro rods. So realistically speaking, uh, I've used SRKs for a long time in survival practice. And for me, I, I've never once felt like I couldn't do anything realistic in survival with a cold steel SRK. Now, once again, there's going to be plenty of people in the comment section below. There always are people like, oh, you know, I used it for 15 seconds and it just broke. And it, the realistic thing is I try to say in many of my comments and responses is some of my most watched videos are me literally pitting my original cold steel SRK up against other survival knives using them. So when I say that these are strong knives, I like legitimately mean that they're actually strong knives. Like they're genuinely good. Um, I I've, I've not personally found a weak cold steel SRK. Now, are there lemons out there with any mass produced? Heck, even with some semi customs, there's still lemons out there. So I'm not gonna say that you would never get a bad cold steel SRK. And once again, I'm not gonna say that cold steel is without flaw. Like obviously these companies do make lemons, okay? But by and large, like when we're talking about most people's experience, these are gonna be really great survival knives doing any realistic survival task. And once again, for the price, even for $150, these are really, really hard to go wrong with. Once again, CPM3V is typically a steel that you're only going to see in more high-end knives. I mean, for instance, the closest competitor to my Cold Steel SRK that I have re rel readily available is my um, BRK Cub, which I love my Cub. Once again, also CPM3V, but this is around a $220 to $250 knife, right? So we have about the same size, about the same blade length, you know, these are reasonably similar knives, about the same, you know, um, stock thickness on them. But, you know, this is a $220 to $250 knife. This is a $99 knife, right? Even 100, even 150 right? So it still offers a tremendous amount of value over its other competitors in the survival knife sphere. And so this really is an, a great pick. And once again, as I've said previously with the Master Hunter, I am actually truly more a fan of these um, rubberized handles that do not have any exposed steel at any point because there's no contact points that will be cold and this is going to be very grippy. It's going to be very um, warm to the touch. So really do love the Cold Steel SRK and the Master Hunter. They honestly make a really, really great and honest to God like solid offering for a bushcraft and survival knife combo. If you are on a budget and you can't run out and buy, you know, a cold or a Bark River Knives bushcraft or a cub, you know, these two really make for great competitive offerings because you can go out there and buy, you know, a very similar setup from Bark River, a, you know, cub 
and a Bushcrafter, both in CPM 3V, just like the Master Hunter and the SRK, both, you know, reasonably the same size. And this will cost you, you know, five to $600, right? This, this together will cost you anywhere from 500 to $600. And that is a great combo. I do love that combo for bushcrafting and survival, but this is very attainable. And I get a lot of comments, especially when I make videos on reasonably unattainable knives like the GSO 5.1 or, you know, once again, the Cub or my, you know, um, cold, <laughs> Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. I get a lot of comments from those people, you know, they're a great knife, but these are so unattainable for me. And these two, for me, the reason why I'm so excited about them is that they are genuinely attainable for the average person and really give the average outdoor enthusiast a ton of value. And once again, I'm definitely not gonna be selling off my, you know, Cub or Bark River uh, Knives Bushcrafter anytime soon. These are great knives, I do love them as well, but these are not attainable for the common person, right? Unless you're really budgeting for them, unless you're really out to get them, they're not going to be very attainable. So these two, on the other hand, are very attainable and very affordable. So I think that they really make a great um, competitive offering for people who want to take bushcrafting and survival or wilderness uh, self-reliance more seriously, but they don't have, you know, thousands of dollars to blow on this, uh, you know, hobby. So that's my opinion. That's my experience. And hopefully this helps you guys make an informed decision. That's what it's all about. I'm trying to offer you guys the best possible deals because all Ultimately, like I'm not really rooting for any companies. A lot of the knife tubers on YouTube right now, not to you know be rude or disrespectful to them, but they're getting a lot of brand deals. You watch them, you know, you see ads, you know, um, or even like ads inside the video, not just you know like uh, pre-roll pre-roll ads. Like these people are literally being you know funded and supported by like Savivi and We, and you see a lot of these knife tubers just in bed with the knife companies trying to stand up. To, to or with these knife companies. And you'll see quite a few of these people in the comment section below. But ultimately, like when it comes to me as a content creator, I'm not in bed with any of these knife creators. They don't send me free knives. This costed me money. This costed me money. You know, all these things, these two costed me money, right? Like I'm just buying all these knives, right? Like I'm not getting sent any of this stuff. Cold Steel doesn't know who I am. Survive doesn't know who I am. Bark River probably does actually know who I am because I've had enough of their knives and I'm like a true BRK collector. But outside of that, like Mike Stewart doesn't really know who I am. He doesn't really care, right? And so like, I'm not really in in bed with any of these people, but um, I really do look out for my end consumers, my viewers, you guys. I really want to help you guys make informed decisions, and so that's why I'm really trying to stick to my gun or stick to my guns when it comes to these knives. So, anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless.